Okay, so <clears throat> so now I, I will present the, the content of, our, uh, of, of the deliverable that we perform on the new materials, new sen sensing manufacturing in model and field. And uh, this is a uh, well, collaboration with my, my colleagues also from uh, CEDEX and from uh, TU Delft uh, who, who participated in the redaction of the, the report. Uh, so I will try to speak uh, on their their name also, and uh, so we had three three parts in this uh, uh, in this report: one on new materials, one on new sensing, and one on three D printing for physical modeling. So the, our methodology has been first to create a group to work on it together, and then we uh, built a questionnaire. So I had the the chance to have in the team young uh, researchers who are very uh, who have good abilities to do questionnaires like that very easily, and um, while we we focused on the, the three points I mentioned, but uh, uh, we we could have spoken of uh, about plenty of other uh, topics, and maybe this could be a new uh, other ideas for future works. I don't know. Uh, okay, and so, uh, so for the first uh, part on new materials for critical infrastructure, we will show only two uh, extract of tables. So first, we uh, <coughs> one table was considering secondary materials susceptible to use to be used in critical infrastructures, and so there there are a kind of list. Uh, a list, in fact, depending on the type of uh, material. So, for instance, in the, the, the A1, uh, construction and demolition recycling industry. So, uh, uh, the, the, the different materials can be uh, identified uh, in order to be reused in, in certain conditions. So, do, those, uh, this, there is a quite extensive list. I will not detail so much here. We also uh, uh, try to identify in the network who uh, could work on which topic. So there are plenty of uh, possibilities on different materials like geoforms, bio-inspired uh, materials. So the opportunities are open and it's possible to solicit, solicitate or colleagues from the different uh, uh, facilities in the Geolab network. Uh, so I'm going to uh, now to sp speak about new sensing. So some uh, new sensors have been already presented, but I will try to do my best. So one, one sensor uh, which uh, is interesting for uh, in-field uh, measurements is the shape acceleration array system. And this type of uh, sensor uh, allow to, to, to get uh, a network, um, a shape of the uh, acceleration uh, during an earthquake. And uh, it is quite easy to, to install and uh, to deliver some uh, measurements. Um, in the field of uh, uh, centrifuge modeling, we, are, we always uh, are looking for small sensors and simple, uh, easy to use sensors. And so uh, since few few years, there are new uh, sensors that do not require uh, to uh, get a pre-saturation of a porous stone. And so those sensors, they, they, they came uh, uh, from, uh, from Japan and uh, they, they, their use is, uh, uh, is now uh, more and more uh, developed. And it is uh, very uh, important for the for, for our applications because if we have a, a porous stone, especially when the pressure changes rapidly, uh, the transmission of the, the pressure is not instantaneous, and and we we could have also uh, problems of um, saturation or desaturation of the porous stone. A uh, new type of sensor are sensors that uh, that can uh, include the, the two uh, different types uh, all together of measurements all together. So four pressure and three axis accelerometers, and this uh, uh, this sensor have been used in uh, the liquefaction tank in in T TU Delft. And uh, so we we can see uh, some results. I will not detail so much, but. Uh, the, the, the measurements uh, show the variation of the of the power pressure uh, quite rapidly and also of the, the acceleration during this type of experiment. 
the fi optical fiber power pressure so has been described uh, uh, previously so it's also a new type of uh, of sensor uh, wireless sensing systems we uh, well when we work on centrifuge if we have small sensor without uh, wires well, that's the paradise uh, but uh, anyway it's not so easy uh, but there are still developments uh, year after year to go in, in this way in order to to reduce uh, and to, to 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 make measurements with uh, as small as possible a perturbation on the physical phenomenon that are uh, involved in in the experiments uh, also you maybe you know that the, uh, the piv technique so it has been uh, widely uh, developed uh, for more than 20, 20 years uh, on the impulsions of colleagues from uh, cambridge on 2D, uh, uh, 2D models, to, so the, the observation is behind the window, and as um, it has been uh, uh, exposed by, by Miguel a few minutes ago, there are also 3D uh, applications, and the 3D applications they, with stereo uh, system uh, have been uh, used for quite a long time, but it requires uh, at 1G, so in the in or a classical environment, but it requires quite a lot of uh, um, calibration to make uh, good measurements. Uh, but anyway, in the, the field of uh, microgravity, the <coughs> This uh, technique is under development also because uh, uh, very good cameras with a good uh, also a rapid calibration systems are now uh, in de under development. And so we, we are working on this type also in, in our lab on this type of measurements. And uh, we hope that it could be very interesting, it's especially when the stresses are small, uh, we can take measurements without making perturbation of the, of the uh, of the model. Uh, okay, uh, one uh, original uh, measurement also is is uh, has been uh, pointed out by a colleague from SEDEX, uh, and they have the, the chance to use ballasts, which is big grains, if I can say, and uh, the idea was to uh, embed it to embed a triaxial uh, accelerometer inside uh, the ballast uh, particle in order to, uh, to, to get uh, uh, information, local information coming from uh, uh, the, the grains uh, in, the, in, in the some grain of, uh, of ballast. <laughs> and uh, so they, are, uh, they have been used, so they are, it, it, it is, uh, uh, a technology, uh, uh, de developed technology, and the next step uh, would be to remove the wire, so to get uh, wireless uh, uh, technique. Okay, so I move now to uh, the 3D printing part, or we say in, uh, additive manufacturing for physical modeling. And so, uh, well, I, I knew about nothing uh, concerning 3D printing before uh, starting this uh, this work and so i discovered that uh, there we have standards international standards on on the, this uh, technique and uh, in fact there are seven classified techniques uh, all over the the world and uh, so i won't i won't detail so much but some of them uh, use uh, polymers uh, uh, extrusion technique, other use powders, even sand. Uh, and so there are plenty of possibilities to make new materials uh, by uh, printing. Um, the, those techniques uh, in the industry, they, they are not at the same level uh, in the development uh, for, for, for applications. So if we want uh, rapid prototyping, prototyping, uh, those met methods should be uh, like uh, binder jetting, for instance, they, are, they, they can be used easily. So it, it is used for uh, designers, for instance, they, they want to create something, they can build by uh, 3D printing uh, easily uh, one piece, not, not necessarily useful for a mechanical purpose, but uh, for design and, uh, and to see how it works. 
And, and for uh, manufacturing, other techniques can, can be uh, uh, developed, can be used uh, in, the, in this set of technology. Uh, and for, for instance, it is said, so I don't know so much because it's quite secret, you, you can make uh, weapons uh, 3D printed with, uh, with uh, metal, uh, metal powder. So, so uh, there are uh, uh, several applications. So first on granular material printing. So we have well, a, a lot of possibilities of shapes are, are opened. So you can see here some examples. So not very new right, from, from 2014. Uh, but uh, well, we, we, you have this, those possibilities. One difficulty uh, when we print is that uh, we print on the surface. So there is a face, there is a face that may be flat, uh, or you have to use two materials in, during the printing process in order to obtain all those, those shapes. And one material is removed. Uh, after printing. Uh, some tests uh, performed uh, by uh, Adamidis or a uh, uh, actual test on granular material. So I, I won't detail so much, but uh, it was a simulation of uh, Austin sand, which is a French uh, calibrated sand, uh, reproduced at bigger scale than the, the grains by, by themselves. So you can see that the, the results of uh, the, the volumetric uh, and uh, the, the deviatoric uh, stress evolution are quite uh, realistic. And so it's, this opens uh, a lot of uh, applications and a lot of hopes for the future. So it is very uh, interesting. Also uh, concerning the permeability. So there are here are some uh, uh, test performed. So you have here on, on the vertical axis, the permeability on the horizontal axis, the porosity. So we have uh, trends that are quite, uh, that, that seems uh, 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 correct and fine, the trends at least. I don't know for the value precisely, but so it's also very encouraging to use this uh, granular material for uh, hydraulic applications. And there is, uh, of course, a possible link with discrete elements, uh, modeling. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if, if Miguel used the printed material in his experiment, but uh, yes, it was. No, <laughs> but next, next time, maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, so I move to clay printing. So uh, in, in the University of Los Andes in, in Bogota, in Colombia, uh, they were uh, research developed uh, what uh, ten years ago uh, concerning the variability of soil. So in this first uh, set of uh, work, uh, it was uh, to, it was studied on two D models. So the, the the small scale model was uh, prepared uh, with uh, clay with uh, I would say parallelly prepared uh, of clay, uh, de deposited with a uh, special uh, uh, gun here. And so we, for each color, there is uh, one uh, property of clay, so more or less plastic. And uh, the distribution here is uh, totally, uh, uh, it, it has been derived uh, from um, uh, uh, um, calculation in order to get uh, the same from one sample to another one, the same mean value and the same standard devi uh, deviation. Mm -hmm. So in this way, it's possible to, to study experimentally uh, the, uh, how the, um, the, the, for instance, the shallow foundation, we react on different types of uh, modelization. And uh, so this, this uh, Lead led to a PhD uh, defense of uh, Mrs. Garson. And uh, a few years uh, later, it was not enough 2D. So uh, Bernardo Caicedo and his team developed a 3D printer uh, in order to not to have stripes, but uh, to use uh, small uh, cubes of uh, different uh, soil with different properties. 
So this is uh, well, a sample here that has been created with a typical mean value and standard deviation of the properties of clay. And it could be compared to another one uh, prepared in same condition, but with another distribution uh, of clay. Okay, so I don't go too much in the detail. If you want details, we have to go in, in the publications. Another uh, application uh, about 3D printing is uh, to recreate uh, rock type uh, material. So uh, this is here a, a type of sandstone printed. So sand is mixed with a kind of glue, if I can say. And uh, so a threshold tests have been performed so we can identify uh, the failure on, on, uh, on, on, and you see some cracks here. Uh, there are also uh, the, uh, some possibilities for uh, re recreating a 3D uh, rock joint. So uh, by analyzing the surface of a rock joint, you can make a scan and uh, have all the geometrical characteristics and then reprint the, the two faces of the joint in order to, to be able uh, to study this, this behavior. So th this, uh, this has been published this year, but it's a work developed in uh, Ecole des Mines in Nancy, um, where they want to make a big uh, one cubic meter uh, rock model with some fra fractures in order to simulate tunneling in, in a fractured uh, zone. So it's under development. It's a second PhD thesis working on this topic. There are also applications on uh, tunnels, so uh, you can create, uh, print a 3D uh, material uh, and have a tunnel inside. And uh, so uh, the advantage of this type of uh, uh, material is that it could be instrumented. So I know that in Nancy they are using a fiber optic, but it's not always totally uh, um, developed, they are, they, are, they are making some calibrations, some difficulties, but uh, well, it's the idea is to include sensors inside in order to have a close information like the forces or uh, strains inside the material. Another uh, material that uh, is, is being printed is concrete. So it, it started uh, uh, well, in the 90s, and there are more and more uh, projects under development. So this could, this could be a, a new way of uh, creating uh, uh, buildings, or small buildings, or I don't know if for the big buildings it could be easy. Uh, Sam has, has shown this picture previously. So it's a, a, a house, experimental house that has been built in, in Nantes, which is uh, 3D printed. So uh, it requires a lot of uh, different uh, 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 abilities uh, because you, you, you need a robot and this robot has to move. Uh, yeah, it has cables, of course, and he has to move to inject uh, here uh, first before the concrete. It, it's the <coughs> insulation uh, system that has been uh, printed and then the concrete will be placed in between. Uh, you have the windows to, to prepare and so on. And, and the originality is that you can see here on the, on the corner, the corner is, is not uh, at 90 degrees. But you can make rounded shapes and uh, more convivial uh, uh, way of life, where <laughs> more convivial rooms in your, in your house. So it has been uh, done once. So there is one prototype in Nantes, but uh, I don't know if the, the process has been developed so much uh, later. Uh, another example, uh, two other examples. So one, uh, I, I found that uh, here in Zurich, a 3D uh, bridge, so small bridge for, for bicycles, I think, or, I don't know. And also artificial reefs that can be uh, printed uh, with concrete. So. Uh, for the fishes, so it, it, it's another type of development. So it's I don't I'm not sure it's a critical infrastructure for human being, but for fishes it could be interesting. Okay, so 
uh, to conclude, I want to say that we, we uh, in this deliverable, uh, we try to show, to give an overview of new materials to sensors and additive manufacturing. Uh, and it opens new perspectives for uh, physical and numerical modeling applications, and also uh, research engineering approaches for, for instance, the critical uh, infrastructures. And I would like to, to finish uh, by saying that, uh, uh, well, uh, we have an Im image of uh, Switzerland with different uh, specialties, and one of them I've seen uh, last Sunday uh, in the chocolate house, uh, very nice here in Zurich, and they were written. It, it was written on the on the wall. This sentence: When uh, when will I be able to make my own chocolate with a 3D printer? <laughs> so. I hope uh, we could succeed also in this way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luke. Uh, do we have any questions? We're making quite good time. Any questions from the audience? Is Test? Yes. Um, I, I was wondering, thank you for the presentation, it was a very nice overview of this work. Uh, I was wondering about the 3D printing, uh, at, it, it prints liquids, I think. Um, no. how, how do we work then? Uh, well, for, for the clay, it, usually we are uh, used to uh, consolidate it. Do you have any uh, reflection on that? And uh, that the stone it needs to dry. Is there more to tell about this? Well, I uh, don't know in details, but uh, yes, you, you can create your model and consolidate afterwards. Uh, that's uh, has been done in, uh, I look at Miguel in, in Los Andes. Uh, but, but the idea was to to have this uh, variability so uh, there is not so much way you can cut samples by your hand or try to have a mechanical uh, system uh, automatized automat uh, well <laughs> that you can control uh, uh, for um, uh, yes in, in the lab we have a uh, a small 3D printer, this this size, so you can. You, it's based on fusion of materials. So you, you have a plastic wire and uh, it melts, uh, and that's it. For a chocolate, I don't know what could be done, but uh, it's the same idea. It's to transform something uh, for concrete. It's liquid, and it will it will become uh, solid afterwards. <laughs> Uh, no, but this is just basically what Luke said. So with the clays, you need to consolidate them. And when you have these non-uniform patterns, you need to be very well aware that some will consolidate faster than the others. But that's just probably accounting for the non-uniformity of the problem. And that's OK. But eventually, you will end up having a solid brick. So I remember, I think Luke has one of these uh, samples from the initial steps. And it's quite a sieve, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 follow up. How do you control the consolidation and the properties of its little brick of clay? Let's say. So, let's say it's predefined by the plastic index. So, what Bernardo is doing here is to change different components of clay. So, he uses monmorionite, kaolinite, and a bit of bentonite. Therefore you might have, by combining them, different consolidation processes or uh, times. And then when you consolidate them on top of that, you need to have a flexible membrane because if you have a rigid plate, some of them will shrink a lot and some of them might not. And those that shrink a lot will carry most of the load. So you have to have a flexible membrane on top. So you're trying to apply the same pressure to each of the pixels to call it in that way. It is tricky and uh, probably it has some room for improvement, but uh, eventually you, 
these samples are probably 20 centimeters high, the, the ones on the bottom, and they end up having been something like 14 centimeters. So it compresses a lot and you reach us, uh, then you can calibrate the shear resistance with a T-bar or whatever sensor you want to use. And you characterize your non-uniform profile. It's pretty, pretty nice. More than welcome to visit Bernard on that. So you do a T-bar test to get the properties after this is constructed. Uh -huh. T-bar no, and I think bull, uh, a cone. Bull, bull penetrometer. Ah, bull penetrometer. You're right. Yeah. 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 Yeah